Hello everyone, for this lesson 4 recap, we're going to be fixing, uh, I guess you could call it a bug, in the example that we used in task 2 uh, in lesson 4. So you'll notice that when the circle gets to the end of the canvas, uh, it does not come back. You have to stop the program and rerun it to see the circle come back. So the point of this problem that we're going to write now is to fix that behavior. So first, uh, just it's always good to practice, going to quickly initialize everything. Um, if you don't understand globals, be sure to check out lesson 4.5. It'll make sure you understand it. But basically, when you define a global like this, uh, it will be uh, you'll be able to read its value from anywhere. But to modify its value, you'll need to have global uh, and the variable name uh, defined in the scope. Uh, you'll see more examples of that in lesson 4.5. So for now, we're just going to say uh, global x. We're going to initialize x as 0. Of course, now setting the size, which is going to be the same, 500, 100. And it's good practice to just clear the background. You don't really need to do this because our draw, which we're going to have right here, first to make sure to get your variable, uh, our draw is going to be clearing the background anyway. Uh, but I like to just put it up here. It's good practice. Um, so we have our background now. It's cleared so that we don't get any uh, smearing of the circles drawing on top of one another. One another. This time we're just going to be using a rectangle, and if you remember, uh, rectangles are by default drawn from their top left corner. So, uh, of course, it's going to start at x, but instead of in the middle, it's going to be starting at 25. Um, and it's going to have a length of 50, and uh, it's going to have a height of 50. So that should be um, right square, uh, pun intended, in the middle of our canvas. Uh, let's first add our motion to it, and if we run this program, and we take a look at it, you'll see that it is indeed in the middle of our canvas. So now what we can do is add our looping behavior. We can use the power of an if. And since we know that our canvas ends at 500 pixels, because that's what we set the size to, we can say that if x is greater than 500, which would mean that it would be drawn off screen, we're going to say x equals 0. And otherwise, using our else, we're just going to say else, we're just going to increment it as normal. So now, when we run that, we're going to see that when it gets to the end of our screen, it just pops right back up. One other, I guess, uh, bug you can say that you can fix with this is that um, when it gets to the end of the screen and it loops back, it starts, uh, the full rectangle is visible right in the beginning. What you can do to mitigate this is since you know that the length of the rectangle, or I guess the square, is 50, you could say x equals negative 50. So that when it uh, meets the end, again, instead of just popping up, it will give the illusion of looping. So setup and draw are very powerful. We're going to be using it for them for the remainder of this course. Uh, and uh, it's good to get some practice, maybe make some more drawing shapes, maybe reverse the direction of this. Uh, and uh, just get some practice in. Bingo!